Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse the Plan is here. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Part two of Never Stay Where You Began. You saw part one last week? This is part two. God is a God of increase. He's about advancement and progress. That's what Christianity is all about. Don't let nobody lie to you about this. If you get to heaven, you're not going to find a ghetto. You're going to find a blessed city and you will be living in it. Glory to God. So let's go to part two of Never Stay Where You Begin. I'm excited about this. You are going to be blessed. Take some notes. Watch now. So progress is a word much used and much, and much misused. All the progress of the past, remember that, all of it, leads up to Christ. If you've had any progress in your past, it leads right to Christ. And all the progress of the future starts with Christ. When I started to build this facility, I mean, it was a future. It started with Christ. What will you have me to do? He said, stay biblical in everything you do in this building. And he called it a campus, which means count the cost before you build the tower. Now, would you do all the stuff you're supposed to do? You understand what I'm saying? And God blessed it. and We built it debt free through the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet when three banks said we could not do that because they knew our financial standing, but they didn't know the God that was behind my financial standing. Do you see what I'm saying? Never stay where you began. That's, that's, that's what Paul is saying. What's the matter with y'all? Yes, it's wonderful to be saved. It's wonderful to be baptized, but you've got to move on to greater and stronger things. Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out every area of your life, growing continually. Not just, not in spurts, but a, a continuous growth. Write this down. Expansion must be on your own appointed track. Expansion must be on your own appointed track. You can't expand because someone else is expanding. You have to be on your track. Expansion must be on your own appointed track, which produces a higher and fuller life. You know, people say, uh, who's your favorite preacher? Jesus Christ. Who else? Now, I have some ones I love, but I never tried to become. I, I did love R.W. Schambach. He's in heaven today. Hey, that man was a preaching machine, but I never tried to become him. I wish I could teach like Joyce Myers. Man, that woman can teach the gospel. You got to give it to her. She can fight it. But I won't do that. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I wish I could teach faith like Kenneth Copeland or Brother Hagin, but, you know, I can't. So I, I do what Jesse does because I stay on my track. Now, I can learn from them. Don't misunderstand me. And I believe in that. But I mean, you got to find out who you are and what God has called you to do. Amen. See, God has called me to preach the gospel to every world, to every creature, to everything. That's what I do. That's why I stay busy. People don't seem to understand that. Like if I don't do what the other church across the street does, they criticize me for that. But have you ever thought you'll find out in mind that God didn't tell me to do that? I got people want me to run for, for, for office politically. They say, you can talk. And I said, no, has you ever thought you'll find out in mind that God didn't tell me to do that? Fred Price was a great friend of mine. He went home to be with the Lord not too long ago. They constantly tried to get him to run for office. And he kept telling them, Fred would just flat nail you to the wall, man. Fred was strong. He said, let me tell you all something. God called me to preach the gospel, not to be a governor or a senator. I'm not interested in that. He said, besides, preaching the gospel is a higher office. That's what he said. And I believe that. You see what I'm saying? So you have to understand, what did God call you to do? God called some people to be missionaries. He didn't call me to be that. He called me to preach as an evangelist, to preach to the world. And with a prophetic edge on it. See what I'm saying? But people get mad. They want to put you in one box. You can't. Because you say they want you all on one the same track. It, can't, it doesn't work that way. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. There's guys with hair and there's guys without hair. Right? Don't look around here. But they're all guys. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. In other words, there's some people going to wear something that you don't like, but it doesn't make any difference. They like it. <laughs> Kathy didn't ever like me with a beard. I've always been a clean shaven man. I'm Papa de Sahel, a clean shaven man. <laughs> you know, but one time I went on a hunting trip and I have a very thick beard. I would look like Santa Claus. My hair, my beard's so white. Watch it. But I went and I did not shave for two and a half, three weeks. I didn't take a bath. I was in the mountains. I wanted to be like Grizzly Adams. I stunk like a dog. I had elk blood on me and deer blood on me. I was out there hunting with these guys. And you know how some people, you see that rough growth? I had a full beard in three weeks. 
They said, good God, man, you got a full bed. And boy, and I was itching. I was just, yeah, Jesus. And I never forget when I came down the mountain. <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're in a cold area, you don't smell yourself. Well, me and a good friend of mine, Leonard, he, 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 passed, he passed away not too long ago. He lived in Luling. Leonard Love, great man. I loved Leonard. He was such a blessing. I miss him. He was about 20 years older than me, but he was a fine man. We walked down with 270 Weatherby's and, and seven millimeter mag uh, rifles on our show. And he said, let's go to Montrose. But we didn't have a cop. We walked down the mountain, seven miles down the mountain. We got down there. We were tired by the time we got down the bottom. So we get out there like, you think you would pick up two guys that smell like a dog with rifles and pistols on them? And somebody stopped. Where you boys going? So we got to go to Montrose. I said, the, the truck uh, that we used to go up there, the battery went down. And he said, well, get in the truck. I said, okay. So, man, I'm in the middle and Leonard's <laughs> on the end. <clears throat> he said, do me a favor, boys. He said, roll the window down. Will you? <laughs> I said, what? They said, whoo, you boys are ripe. <laughs> I said, we're ripe? Good Lord. I guess, and we were, boy. So when we got to the hotel, <laughs> watch this now. I was getting dirtier by the moment because now I'm sweating because up there, it's cold. Our campsite was at 10,000 feet. Okay? I brought Kathy up there one time. Remember that, baby? I mean, it was just such a blessing. Watch it. When I got there, I got in my hotel room I said, man, I started pulling that clothes off. Boy. I thought, good God. So I got it and I threw it on the floor in the bathroom. I said, there's a dead rat in here. <laughs> I said, dead? I mean, I'm naked as a jaybird. I just thought, God, there's something terrible in here. And I started looking underneath, <laughs> looking underneath the sink and everything. And I went, and I, sm I went, whoa, it's me. <laughs> so I turned, I took, I put the shower on and I was so dirty the water wouldn't wet me. <laughs> So I, tried, I had to wash my head three times before I could actually feel my hair stuck. The water was brown. Can you imagine those guys that skinned buffalo? They wouldn't take a bath for a year. That's why they were called cow boys. Stay with the cows, boys. So I progressed myself and took a shower. And then I took all that nasty clothes and mailed it to Kathy. I said, don't open it up, Kathy. You can either throw it away, you can walk to open it. It's rough. You know, and I said, I will, I progress that day. I will never do that again as long as I ever live. You know, so now when I go on a hunting trip and if they don't have no uh, shower for sale, I do a marine bath. I'm going to, you know, I did brush my teeth. That's about the only thing I did during that two and a half weeks. And I got to have brushed my teeth. There's no other choice about that. But I mean, uh, it was just amazing. See, and and when I first went out there, I couldn't hit the side of a barn. But by the end of the two weeks, I had progressed. That I began to look at the atmosphere, at, at, at the landscape, look for something that shouldn't be there. And it might be just the tip of a deer's ear. Aha. But when you're first there, you're going. And yet he's looking at you. You think, he got it made. This boy can't see us. You see? But as you progress more in the honey, you, become, you expand, see? So expansion must be on your own appointed track, which produces a higher and fuller life. See, faith is the true adventure in life. Write that down. Faith is the true adventure in life. Even when we cannot see, we still go on. Because the evidence of faith is not seen. It is the true adventure in life. I love walking by faith. Because even when we can't see, we still go on. We still go on. See what I'm saying? And when the hurricane hit, I mean, my Lord, it was devastation. I was the first person to come into the church, but you should have heard this church. The fire alarm was on. Woo, 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 woo. It was going, no telling how long it had been on. I don't know, you know. And, all, and, and that, that drop ceiling was all falling down, and I'm looking around, and uh, there was water coming here, and I looked like that, and I thought, nah, boy, I mean, it was loud. So I went to each building looking at all those different things. I was not depressed. I said, well, you gave it your best shot, but we're still here, huh, boy? Amen. We're still here. Hallelujah. So the first thing I thought was progress past the damage. Okay, let's see how we fix this. Okay, let's start doing this and let's start doing that. And God gave me my, my, my theme. What shall I do for thee? And guess who showed up? Contractors, tree people, <laughs> all kinds of stuff just showed up. Bless God and helped me get this place back in. 
in, in, in the way it is. And we still got some work to do. And uh, they told me about the, to, to replace the, the roof on the, uh, the production distribution center. They're 40-foot sheets. Am I right, Bobby? 40-foot sheets. That's long. But we're going to get that. We got that all coming. And then, and then the, uh, uh, I think, is it uh, Renee's office needs to be fixed? And uh, I think upstairs in one of the offices for the kids has to be fixed and moved around. And, but that's all in the works. See, we're progressing toward just like it was. That's right. See, that's why we had church the Sunday after. Amen. What would you have done if, you'd have had no, if you didn't have a generator? Preach in the yard. Amen. Sweat. Yeah. So, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Listen to me. So what? This gospel must go forward. What about those people, missionaries, when they had nothing out there? Amen. What did they do? They preached the gospel. Amen. You see, they wasn't just satisfied to be where they were. They had to increase and grow to that fullness. See, that's all part of it. It's all part, as you grow to the knowledge of the fullness of the statue of Christ. I ain't saying it's fun. Did I enjoy it? No. It ain't fun flushing a toilet with pool water, but it works. It does work. So you do what you have to do. So then I got to thinking, my God, I'm, I, I haven't been in the ocean a day and a night. Like Paul said, I was in the deep a day and a night just treading water. I ain't never, thank God, I don't want to ever go through that. But a lot of men in World War II, boy, they got blowed up on them, on them ships and they were in that water and sharks came at them. I mean, you, 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 whoo, people have no idea. That's why they called the greatest generation. You see what I'm saying? But they did it. 17 years old, some lied about the age, 16 years old, on Iwo Jima. My God, 5,000 Marines died in one day, but that didn't stop America. We had to go forward. Why? That's called progression. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you understand that, you'll understand that faith is the true adventurer in life. Even when we cannot see, we still go on. Write this down. Faith is that function or power of the human soul. Faith is that function or power of the human soul. It really is. Without it, it's impossible to please God and impossible to take the first step toward achievement. See, if you don't have faith, you can't even take the first step toward achievement, much less please God. Let me say it again. Faith is that function or power of the human soul. Without it, it is impossible to please God. That's Hebrews 11. Go read it. And impossible to take the first step toward achievement. Now, you know, I'm not the pastor of the church. Kathy is. So after, you know, the idol left, she turned around to me. She said, we're going to have church Sunday. Now, everything's all blown up. There's oak trees. And you can't even get in here. Broke the gate, the, the arms to the gates, and pushed one gate completely off, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But that didn't stop us. Just got out there and started doing what we have to do. And God began to send the people to help us. Amen. Oh, what a blessing it was. Glory to God. I made friends that used to be enemies in the midst of this thing. It took a hurricane to make a friend. People that wouldn't talk to me, now, as a friend of mine, hey, how you doing, man? And then I thought about Jesus. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto you. In other words, but where, there's, where there's destruction, it brings people together. You see what I'm saying? So there's always somebody mad about you. Somebody, you know, whatever. But that doesn't make any difference because faith is that functional power of the human soul. When Kathy told me, I'm called to preach the gospel. What I thought was you can't even give a testimony. How are you going to preach the gospel? You can't say two words without busting out crying. But she does a pretty good job today, doesn't she? Amen. Yeah, yeah. But see, what happened? Bro, she said, I'm not funny like you. I said, you're not supposed to be funny like me. Just be you. If you want to say funny, funny, fine. Then just do what you do. Quit trying to copy someone because that's what you are, a copy. If you want to copy someone, you copy Jesus because that's as high as it gets right there. No one else. It's a, let me just say, it's a, anyone else is a lower level. You see what I'm saying? So when you understand, see, you're saying this, I can't be what God made me, so I have to copy someone. No, God made you good. Made you unique. Made you different. Why did he, why did he create different colored people? Because he wanted to. What's the problem with that? Why do he want black people? Because I guess he liked black. White people, I say like white. Yellow people, you know, that's the Asian people. I say like yellow. Red people, 
Hey, 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 hey. He's like red. Brown people. Feliz Navidad. Because he, li- he likes variety. What's wrong with that? Why is everybody struggling with that kind of craziness? Why can't you look at a person and just simply say, hello, it is a pleasure to meet you. I don't like it when people say, oh, you going to preach for Bishop Keith Butler? And I'm going to do that next Sunday. Yeah, at that big black church. I ain't no big black church. It's predominantly black, probably 95% black, maybe more. No, it's God's church. Why are you going to say that? And when I go preach for John Hay, he'll say that, you're going to preach at that big Hispanic church? No. No. I'm going to preach at his church, God's place. Why do you have to say that? You see what I'm saying? You haven't progressed. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You still see in color. When you ought to see the human spirit. And that person, who they are and what they are. And be proud that they're part of, of you. Everybody likes different things. People say, what's your favorite motorcycle? Screaming Eagle Fat Boy. I like that fat boy. But other people like other ones. That's fine. They make all different designs. Kathy says, why do you eat the same thing every time you go to a restaurant? I said, well, let me give you a great revelation, Kathy. I like it. <laughs> I'm not bored with it. I'm not tired of it. I, I know it's going to be good. That's why you've had a lot of bad meals. Could you try new stuff? <laughs> then you want to eat mine. No. <laughs> Let me go on. Praise God. <laughs> Christian life must have a beginning. Write it down. Christian life must have a beginning. And that beginning is not the end. That's what Paul is saying. You got to leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ. You got to go on further. Christian life must have a beginning, and that beginning is not the end. It is only the beginning of the alphabet to form your progress and perfection. You see what I'm saying? When you got born again, that's the alphabet. You start off with A. Let me say it again. Christian life must have a beginning, and that beginning is not the end. It is only the beginning of the alphabet. To form your progress and perfection. That's in everything you do. Spiritual, physical, and financial. At the time of this preacher, I've been married to Kathy 51 years. And it's still developing. I'm amazed in that. We hadn't got bored with each other. At least I don't. I don't I, I've never got bored with her. She had never got bored with me. Now, she's a little bit more saltier. Yeah, women get a little old, they get a little salty, you know. When they're young, they're sweet. They just listen. But as they get older, they go, no, 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 no. This is the way this is going to be. You got that? Oh, yes, ma'am. I got that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) And it's good. I like salt. (laughs) It just is. You know, she said, what do you want to eat? And I said, what are you eating? Why are you asking me that? I said, I don't know. I just... Thought I would say it. <laughs> I'll eat what I want. What do you want? Okay. And, and if she's trying to lose weight, she gets mad at me. So I'll, I, I will order something that she kind of likes, or have a, and I'll just sit it in front of her, and she's eating like it. I said, see how long before she falls to temptation. You know, it's your fault that I gained two pounds. No, I didn't. It's your mouth and your hand that did that. (laughs) Don't get on that scale. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to help you. Don't get on that scale every day. You you didn't gain two pounds in one day. A pound of fat is 3,500 calories. No, you you get water weight. You can actually lose. You can actually don't eat nothing and be heavier the next day. I'm telling you one day, this thing ain't working. It's water weight. You understand what I'm saying? Stay off that thing, man. I don't know how much I, I haven't known how much I weighed for the last 20 years. I go by my clothes. If my clothes start getting tight, oh, oh, back this baby down. If it's loose, we're doing good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But not Kathy. She, gonna get, she puts the scale behind the door so I can't see the number. But I can tell if it's wrong or if it's right. I mean, if he's lost weight, she come out smiling good because she's behind the door. 
if it's, she weighs more, she think, <laughs> You hear like a wall going on behind the door. <laughs> Boy, something wrong with this cup. <laughs> Don't put your foot on this skin. One time I put my foot on the skin and I was looking and she kept sliding. Oh no, <laughs> she was getting depressed. But, Get your foot off that scale. I thought it was funny she didn't. <laughs> Christian life must have a beginning and that beginning is not the end. It's only the beginning of the alphabet to form your progress in perfection. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how we grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Listen, sometimes it's not easy. Let's face the fact, it's not. And sometimes there's persecution when you advance in life. People get jealous and mean, but a life of faith is a wonderful adventure. Boy, I have been having an adventure in faith since I discovered faith. 46 years ago. Boy, when I started preaching, I said, my God, the adventures of faith. That doesn't mean persecution didn't come. That doesn't mean trials and tribulations. But you know what? I walk by faith and not by sight. I said this last week. There's more to your salvation than escaping hell or winning heaven. When you got saved, you were just beginning. So I encourage you to strive to a higher and fuller life in Christ Jesus. You can do that. How, how do you do that? Start every day with Jesus and close out the day with Jesus. Just do a prayer vigil, boy, in the morning and one at night, and God will bless you. You know, God gave you unique gifts and abilities, and he wants to help you develop them. Why? Because he believes in you. I believe in you. I really do. Why, why, why do I believe in you? Why does God believe in you? So he can use you to expand his kingdom. Father, bless the people today. Help them to understand this, God, that you want them to grow and you want to bless them in the city and the field and going in and going out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm telling you, I believe you're growing right now. You're expanding, Lord. People talking about inflation? Well, get inflated with God's word. Get inflated with God's power. Get inflated with God's spirit. My God, I'm starting to preach here. This is such a blessing that God, I'm telling you, man, God is good. Kathy's coming right now with some glorious moments that you sent in. And I just love them because they bless me, they bless God, and I know they bless you. So Kathy, take it away and bless the people. Thank you for watching Glorious Moments. Today I have two excerpts from two testimonies in our, from our October magazine. This first one is from Arkansas. It says, I am an airline pilot. Last May I resigned from my position because I could no longer commute to work. I watched the JDM 2021 Visionary Conference online. Brother Jesse took an offering for an avionics upgrade for the ministry's airplane. I planted a $116 seed, believing for a pilot upgrade as well. For the past year, I've been driving with Uber and Lyft, sprinkled in with a little bit of DoorDash. I was making more money being a taxi driver than as an airline pilot. Fast forward to June 2022. I was offered a job as a pilot for an airline that is owned by American Airlines. I didn't even have to do an interview. I applied and they sent me the job offer about three days later. My previous employer paid me $31,198.33. My new company is gonna pay me around $100,000 for the first year and around $150,000 in the second year. Glory be to God. Not only that, but since this company is owned by American, I have a guaranteed job with American Airlines a few years down the road with no interview required. Thank you, Jesus. I love that testimony. Now this next one is from Louisiana. It says, I had been trying to sell my house for years. Since becoming a partner with your ministry, the Lord has blessed me tremendously. I sold my house for a lot more than I thought I would. Then two months later, I received a $50,000, extra $50,000 I never expected. You truly reap what you sow. You know, both of the testimonies that I've read today reminds me of Psalms 118 verse 23, which says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. I hope you'll send me your testimony about the marvelous things that God is doing in your life through JDM. Come on, let's glorify God together. God bless you. I believe that God has placed within each one of us a deep desire to live a better life. Whether it's a life free from pain, fear, or lack of any kind, God wants to bring that to pass for you. In my book, You Are Designed for Glorious Living, you'll discover how to achieve the better life God has for you. 
You know, long before you took your first breath, God had designs on you for glorious living. You are designed for glorious living. Available at JDM.org. Have you ordered your copy of this month's product offer? It's my message. I love it. The experience of spiritual thinking, thinking like God and receiving like God. This teaching is a great companion to today's message. The experience of spiritual thinking will show you how to think God's thoughts. Why? So you can have and do all he wants you to do. How do I get a copy? All you have to do is go to jdm.org for all the ordering information. It will bless you. It will minister greatly to your partners. I thank you for allowing me to preach this gospel all these years through your faithful financial support. We will not, and I said it last week, I'm going to say it again, we're not lazy with your seed. We don't take your seed and burn it on us or go with your seed. So no, no. You know why? Because God's word is true. And I know when you sow seed, you want people saved, healed, blessed, and touched. If you ever come to one of my meetings, I break depression. I break despondency. I bring joy. I don't care how bad the world is. Greater is he was in you and me than he was in the world. And I'm starting to preach right now. I can't help it. Partners, help me today to reach more people, change more lives, all at one soul at a time. And that's what it's all about. We are working people here, buddy. We don't play no game. <laughs> Ain't no grass grows under our feet. I mean, that'd be good English, but it make good sense. And I hope you enjoyed this week's broadcast. If you want to view the entire message of Never Stay Where You Began, you can do that on our free, notice the word free, JDM at or online at totaljdm.org. Pretty simple, isn't it? Be sure and tune in next week for my message. Enduring may not be easy, but it gets you to the end. And that's what you want to do is get to the end. Thank you, partners, once again for helping me. Your faithful financial support is so important to God and to this ministry. See you next week. Bye-bye. Do you see yourself as God sees you? God sees you as a powerful, wonderfully made, unique person of faith. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, but as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our October partner offer, I am what I think I am, will show you how to fill your mind with good things, banish thoughts that come against God's word. Receive it today. Go to jdm.org for all the ordering information. You're going to outlast the devil. You're going to outlast him, man. He gets tired quickly. <laughs> Jesus beat his brains out in the wilderness. The Bible said that he left Jesus for a season. That's three months. He had to go heal up. Jesus beat him up bad, see. And when it was all finished and done, I mean, Jesus' ending was far greater than his beginning. In his beginning was the virgin birth, but in his ending, you came into the knowledge of who he is. He opened up the doors for all of us to come boldly to the throne of grace with a petition and a supplication with thanksgiving.